Actually, another thing as well, if someone isn't very familiar with Valorant, I'll say it's another reason I don't worry about the games as like being on some collision course or that you have to pick one or the other. Like I say, I think, first of all, they can both totally coexist. And if anything, I actually think it's more like if people, like I said, like I said, if they, if they like the things about Valorant, like I said, like you can't play in people as well, I think then they're just going to stay in Valorant. And if they were on the fence, actually, maybe we can win them as they have to. Like if they get the basics of the game down, they watch a bit, they, they probably have the grounding in it compared to a different game. But one thing that will always always make CS have a massive advantage in my opinion is Valorant because it's run by Riot Games is way more akin to what they do in League of Legends with their circuit than it is the CSGO circuit like I actually think the fundamental mistake they've made in Valorant is that like they still like basically if you want to know how in League they envision it it's because they don't use third party operators they don't use the ESLs of the world they just do the tournaments themselves what they do is they always make what they think is a coherent internal circuit right and the flaw of doing this is I would describe it as they treat the circuit as if the circuit was the story, not the team and the player. And what I mean by that is they actually they've done this all the time in League of Legends. I've always found it so weird. They treat in League of Legends when you watch like the LCS or LEC, they treat it like the show is what you watch, not the team that you like. Like you're supposed to tune in at like you know 5 p.m. and just watch like six best of ones in a row of all the teams in the league play. And I've always thought that's such a weird, like almost antithetical approach to sports, though. Like, I could never imagine a world where, for football in the UK, we all sit down and then back-to-back -back watch all the teams. No, you watch your team play, you know what I mean? Maybe, mm -hmm. like, if there's a big televised game that the top two teams in the league play, maybe you watch that one because you're a general fan of the sport. But aside from that, in, in most things, you watch your team play. And the reason why I bring this up is because it means they've taken a lot of the flaws of the League of Legends circuit and put it into their Valorant circuit. So in League of Legends, famously, you divide it up all the time. In CSGO, I always explain it like this. I might bitch about like, you know, the 14th best team didn't make it to the major from Europe, Maniac. I'm actually being pretty spoiled when I do that. In games like League of Legends, if you don't know, only the top four teams from China, which is the best region, go for League of Legends to the World Championship. So if you're in, no joke, the fifth best team, there's actually one of the best players of all time is in one of these teams. If you're in the fifth best Chinese team in the best region, you sit at home for real and watch the equivalent of like Greyhound play the game. Like I'm giving like a CSGO company here. You have to just sit and watch Greyhound play and go, oh, well, let's see if they win World instead of me now that's actually not very satisfying not just for players but for the audience like it means essentially you have so you have to like pray that your teams are in the top two to three in their region then they go to the national there's only two international tournaments a year by the way with the equivalent of wage. but imagine if there was only majors guys and then no cat of eight in cologne and then no blast world fight and it was just only pro league but regional mm. we're back to that like that's not actually as satisfying for me at least a circuit i like the circuit of the big tournaments i love the fact that like every few weeks we go down to zero then you feel that the first few days of the tournament you get into the yeah. hype of it you get hit the sweet spot where everyone's playing well the playoffs comes to top six semis we're in the finals and then we do all the narratives and we reset again and we come back i've always loved that it's like formula one to me you know you go away you come back a few weeks later you're right back into it again i've always thought it's a really compelling way to follow it valorant isn't like that it's way more like league if people don't know like in valorant they have like the domestic scenes again then the top couple of teams go to the international tournament and have that but there's only a few of those only like two or three of those each year and so actually in that sense i actually think we're always going to have an edge as long as we have this third party circuit because as much as i mean we've been talking about this a lot on my shows from maui snake as much as i like bitch about the majors the brilliant thing about the majors is this i don't like for example like the swiss system and the fact that like they can't have double a limb anywhere so but the beauty of it is they still allow esl to run their tournaments so i can still like I, I even joke now I don't want Claude to be a major because I actually prefer the current format I think it's actually the best in CSGO so I think that's still a big strength that people don't realise you're not choosing between Valorant and that if, in this sense you're choosing between the circuit like do you like our circuit or do you want their circuit I'm, I'm right there with you I, but I do think there is a point that's, that we, we have to address and I would love to have your opinion on it when you have this sort of structured story driven calendar as you mentioned for League of Legends and Valorant what you essentially do is that you artificially make sure that all of the region have a minimum of, of activity, right? You, you manufacture it. It's right there. If you're from America, if you're from Europe, if you're from Asia, if you know that your league, doesn't matter the level of your league, you're going to have a couple of spots guaranteed in the higher tier tournament. You, you funnel in a whole lot of motivation, talent, possible eyes and investment onto your circuit. The problem of that, the downside of that is that the level is a step below in terms of priority. The, the highest level of the, the tournament at the very end of the mountain is not your number one priority. You want to have massive activations. That to me is an issue, of course. I also, fellow ex-professional gamer, I like to have the best teams in the world ending up at the yes. end of the playoff at a major. That's what I do want. But what we would have if we wanted to have it all, the 
eat our cake and have it too, or have your cake and eat it too, is that we would need to have organically activated regions all over the world without that circuit. And that's kind of the conundrum that I haven't solved. Of course, it's, it's a harder piece yes. to solve just right now. But if we could have le- regions actually being activated and alive and have a competitive environment on their own without forcing them into spots for the Colognes, the Katowice's, the major, that would be the best of both worlds. Yes. But that's what they ensure on their end. That I agree with you on the weakness of, of the end result of the last tournament, which is not something I want to. But that also keeps alive many, many regions who maybe otherwise wouldn't organically. And, and I, that's something that we haven't solved. And maybe something that CS2 could come in handy because of that little extra push of interest suddenly and more people start coming in. Profiles come out. You talk about old professional gamers like Wale, Wale came back in. Be like, hey, yo, CS2 is out. I'm interested. Like, I might have a role in this scenario. This could be something where we grab a bit more attention and and sort of reanimate some of the regions because that's something they did. All yes. of the regions are alive. That's not the case for us. Not really right now. Yeah, basically, if people don't know, the actual fundamental philosophical difference of what Riot did here is essentially in CSGO, if you like the circuit, you're like me, you're an elitist, you just want to see the top 20 teams play as much as possible and watch all the tournaments. But what they tried to do in Riot was the opposite. They tried to do the utopian dream of like, we'll do the grassroots and then like you say, every scene. So if people don't know, there's even like a French league in League of Legends that's actually like pretty big, like it has like legit viewership on it and it has its old French commentators and teams and they have imports and everything. So it's more like soccer in that sense again it's like a healthy regional scene the problem is i am an elite so like i say i think the mistake they made in league and valorant was they've essentially given too much to the regional scenes and like i say essentially mm. you can just get caught in your regional scene you can't get out whereas the example i always give is this you know how in games like league of legends an eternal discussion is like how can europeans and americans compete with chinese and asians because they're like just better at the game and they win more often right the real problem with that is i always tell people the sad thing is i know the answer guys because i come from a different game you actually you have to just give like cross pollination what you have mm. to have is even if the best european team isn't actually as good as the best korean team for example familiarity will give you a crack at winning that game and we all know there's some cs go because think of teams who have like come i mean i'll even use the example of greyhound to get the odd upset if you actually look on raw level if i had to do like you know fucking top trump style media call like fifa ratings of like the players the Greyhound players no just to them wouldn't be high up they wouldn't be anywhere close to even some of the like the tier two eu teams that have like FPL players and stuff but if they come and they play in the European meta three or four times a year and they get familiar with it and suddenly when they play a Furia or something like that it's not like oh my god Furia but weren't they the semis of the major it's like oh wait we've played these last tournament once it's just a normal game eventually you can get an upset you can, you can win that and become, whereas the real problem you have in League of Legends like I say is you're just off in your region all year long and then you just go to the world championship it's like right play this guy who's the best in the world from Korea and you're like the fuck? I've only been watching them on, ga- on demos though. You know what I mean? Like you don't know, you don't know what it's like to be like, in the, in the cage with them as it were. So that is the thing that would fix it. It's why it, you are really picking between the two. Like I said, I'm an elitist, so I just want the best mm. competition. I mean, it's like you said earlier about the thing about how it's. That's another thing about Counter Strike again. If you're in Counter Strike, you've almost philosophically chosen you don't want a lot of novelty you don't want new maps every three months you don't want a new gun to be added to the game or the equivalent of a hero i mean dude we lost our mind when they just added agents which were just skins because they just I didn't know. look the same like that one, they actually had real new characters guys that can teleport and shit inside valorant like so essentially we have chosen we don't want the league approach we want it to be static like we're talking about and i've always thought one thing i do love about cs is why i am boring in my own way me and lopez had a convo like this on skype no joke in like 2008 or something we both actually agreed to the same philosophy which is you know when people say that classic line they still say to this day maniac where they go i mean this i'll use the old example from a few years ago they go oh it's just bloody team liquid versus astralis at every event that gets really boring after a while it's like for you mate i'm a nutter I, I've always said this if you have like really great teams like I mean last year it could have been Na'Vi and Faze when they had that awesome rivalry when you have teams like that for real I'm just like lock them in a fucking room and have them play a hundred times for the rest of the year like I don't care mate I'll, I will watch every single one I'll watch every veto to see what angle they do I'll, like I, I love that shit I don't I, like, like you're saying I don't get bored of it I don't ever look at even the game this is why I was one of those people who doesn't want to remove like Mirage because I look at it and I'm like you just want novelty guys you just want a fresh feeling like I look at Mirage I'm like it's just a functional map it's just a good map in the game that works for all sorts of teams and so i'll watch that forever like as long as as long as it doesn't have like a bug that ruins the game to yeah. me that's like a, that would be like coming into a chess tournament one day and going sick of this bloody board like that'd be the one thing no one ever thinks about like you, you know you might like want to change your strategy you'll be annoyed with his strategy if some guys playing the equivalent of like 
Jamin Chess or whatever. Like, you never come in and go, tell you what, what about 30 by 30? You know, you can never, no one comes in and does that concept. So I'm more like that. I, for Couch Strike, yeah. I do just like what we've got. I like the core product and I actually don't want too much change. So to come back no, to no, CS, no. Taylor, so, like, yeah, go on, go on. You jump no, in, no, I, I'm with you on that because I do, I do think for the highest level of esports, I'm right there with you. I'm a purist. I'm an elitist. I like the best of the best. I think we've already found somewhat of a very much working formula. That being said, 2025 with the whole normal partner, I don't, I have no idea what kind of, mayhem we're gonna dive into i mean this uh, there's probably some smarter people than me who can figure out what the hell's gonna happen in 25 but i do feel like as a game we've we've got it down to a t like the highest of highest level we have incredible teams great stories great superstars we have all of that that's nailed down i'm just thinking of ways to bring more people into the game so that the game can take another dimension get even bigger that's all i and i don't believe that this is only happening at the very top because i do think the top it's set. It's beautiful what we have. Like it's some minor tweaks here and there, but I wouldn't change. No, in fact, I don't even know what I would immediately change. Maybe a couple of questions about format of tournament, but that's beside the point. What I do think we would need, and it's something that ESL had started doing with the challenger, is the same as they do with tennis. The more viable and interesting environment you have below the very top, right? The more you can funnel new people who are interested in potentially making a living out of it, who can justify giving everything they have, investing their whole life into this without damaging what's at the very top. And that's what's okay. happening in tennis. They have in tennis, basically, if you follow a little bit, they have different categories, uh, categories of tournament. They have ATP 250, 500,000, and then you have the Grand Chelem, which is obviously all the best players are even, by the way, guys, invited. Huh? We all yes. bitch about the invite. Tennis players are being invited yeah. and being put in a single elimination bracket to make sure that Djokovic never plays against Nadal or Federer doesn't play against Djokovic before the end. That's, that's how tennis does it at the very top level. Yes. But what they do have over us is that they have a super healthy bunch, a legion of challenger tournaments and ATP 250 where kids around the world, if they are a fan of tennis and they want to make something out of it, there are plenty of different ways they can already make yes. a living and they can travel a little bit, get experience, get, maybe get to meet a couple of pros here and there. Maybe one day you get invited, you have a wild card at a qualification for Wimbledon, you play one game suddenly, and that's it, it picks off. Like it's, it's such a good example of a circuit that's healthy and has both a very elitist format, top heavy, where the superstars yes. are protected invited because they carry the story and at the same time they've opened the gate and they've made sure that people who want to get in are not gate kept uh, gate kept 10,000 kilometers from the top yes. they are there and i think in counter strike this is where we can do some work because our very top is organized our very top is great we have such a good circuit already but if we could do more to grab that people in this sort of purgatory which is you're not obviously you're not gonna roll in a rolls royce and have a penthouse in los angeles you're not but you can live of it. You can you can live your dream. You can be a player. You can make some money, and here and there you have a chance at the top. I think this is where we could make really some big improvement in the game, and this is where we would kind of funnel way more people into the game. So I don't know what's your take on that. To me, that's also something where we have regressed because of all the online, you know what bullshit from a few years ago. The main thing that happened was, if you remember, when we came back and we had the lands again, all we have is the top end door. That's all we have now. We just have like FaZe versus like Na'Vi versus Virtus Pro. Like the real problem we have for me is, where are the DreamHack Opens? Back in the day, even a few years ago, we had something akin to what you're asking for, which is, because the sad thing is, I'll tell you what will prove it to people. Here's what you do. Pick a team that became really good in like 2020 and 2021 and go on their Liquipedia. And what you will find is, unless they're rare examples like Gambit youngsters who were just a bunch of young kids who would just play. If they're actually like established players like Forza and Fury and stuff, they were playing all the lands early. You just didn't notice them. They were at like a DreamHack Open and they went out on the group stage. And then, you know, then they lost in a semis against, I don't know, I'll pick like Imperial or something. Like that, when it had, I guess mm. Brandt or like, there used to be a fairly healthy tier two scene like this. In fact, if people don't know, some of the people from the teams now, like the the breaches, the game, allegiance, the Apex, they were all in that scene back then. All those coaches, they're not just brand new now. They haven't just joined, come out the womb to, today coaching some team. They were earning their stripes on like the tier two circuit. And the cool thing about that was, I even think it was akin, like you're saying, to how the ATP was. Because if people don't know, one of the beautiful things about the ATP is to some degree, you have wiggle room as to which of the tournaments you play. Like obviously everyone wants to play the Grand Slam. And in general, if you're healthy, you play the ATP 1000, which is the level just below 
anymore because those yeah. are the prestigious tournaments. That's the equivalent of Cologne, Kerevitsa, and the majors, basically. But beyond that, you can actually pick and choose. Like, for the 500 and 250 events, they have loads of them. And what you do is, some of it tends to be regional. Like, for example, obviously, if you're, like, from Europe, you might play the one that's in Spain and Basel and something like that. Like, you know, whereas, like, the American guy, I get if he doesn't go to all those. Maybe he waits till the US Open circuit where you do all those little ones. And you can pick and choose to some degree. And you can also do it, by the way, to, like, like in theory, you couldn't see us, but people don't consciously do this. You can also do it to manipulate your rankings. Like, if you're this far off a spot, you can just go yeah, to loads of, of the small ones and sort of farm them and then get your points up to get to the next one. You can do that too. But basically, that's the real problem I see is that I know part of it also is that ESL bought DreamHack and sort of just got rid of the brand. But like, that's what I see is missing. I know they're trying to do it with like the ESL Challenger, but to me, that's like, that's still a bit too high level, if you know what I mean. Like, if you go look at the ES, if people don't know, the last ESL Challenger final was Virtus Pro against Dents. It's like, but that is tier one. What are we doing here? Like, those teams are mega. Like, like, essentially to me, that's like slightly too high for that level. I want another level below that. Because one thing I used to love back in the day was when you had the DreamHack open, like I say, you would you also weren't just like nobody's at all was watching because there would be one or two teams. There might even be like an early Vitality squad if they've just like formed or an MSL's North team might go. There'd be one or two big teams. So you have someone to gun for and sort of try and beat. And the, the actual like tearing would be pretty good. And then, like I say, when you went to the bottom, at the bottom, you'd even have the teams that again now aren't anything but one day they'll be interesting like the bravado team from south africa will be there or i mean talk i'm aging myself now but the renegades team and stuff when they had the australians might be in the mix you know and that was actually like like you say it was something where you're not simple you're not making 40k a month and you're not going to win a major but you have an actual career you have something to play for and you have your own sort of part of the circuit and i even thought the cool thing back then was when if you actually could ever like fluke win one of those you will get an invite to like a kind of eats or something like especially the Monday with the playing thing it would be it would be a shoe in it would even work sense so I agree yeah. with you on that one that's the only downside is because I had to learn this myself even though I would just choose like some elitist super league with the top eight teams and say fuck everyone the downside of that is that would be short sighted because eventually I wouldn't have the talent in my super league would have they'd be all yeah, exactly. stuck off and they wouldn't develop and the joke is I wouldn't get a Z we wouldn't come along I'd just be stuck with NES till the end of time in my in my analogy so I do agree you do need something like that essentially you need the pipeline to connect yes. up like the equivalent of a analogy to bring in the fresh talent don't you yeah exactly and the problem that we have because we, we're making this comparison with tennis which i, I really believe is a good example oh, the problem that we have is that they actually have a product and I, I use product for the term tennis as a discipline that is so strong that if if there is a there is two or three tournaments in switzerland that are part of the atp hell i love to go see atp Kstad, and i'm not gonna i know the best one i'm gonna see there is probably like a top 10 player in fact casper right. Ruud, casper Ruud played in 2021 that was great i saw him there in Kstad. the rest of the players were not that interesting from a storage driven perspective but because i know tennis and i know the quality of the show i'm about to see i'll go there and so they have actual people and they have eyes on these shows in counter-strike now i i'm not being an idealist i'm realist i know what it is who now is going to tell me that they have the budget to run an event with c-class players yes. which we're not necessarily going to watch you still have to you have to have costs and expenses to run that down so what we need is we need to find ways to make these tournaments interesting. And I think the gateway to Katowice, the gateway to Cologne, that's one way. Have one wild card per event where you invite maybe like a big team who accepts to come in here and do it as a prep or whatever. Hey, here is Vitality. They're playing the whatever challenger, wherever the hell in Europe. Here we are. Like you have to find ways to make it a little bit interesting because let's be real. We, we cannot just fill a small arena of C tier, D tier players right now. And so nobody really is going to do it because they're going to lose money of it. It's going to be just straight up running a wall. So the, the conundrum is kind of trying to find a way to make this sort of sub-level interesting and enticing for the fans and economically possible to survive. And then you have something going on. But we're not there quite yet. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've solved the equation because I haven't. But I think this is where like, if you suddenly find a way to make these less interesting, but like cost budget wise sort of affordable events then maybe you've just unlocked something right there and that would funnel a whole ton of people just well, maybe hashtag me on twitter if you have an idea because yeah i'm th thinking about it to see more cool funny interesting clips based on topics from my content well subscribe to this channel then or you know be a pleb and don't